Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. I haven't made one in a while, and the last one I made was this API call to get Bitcoin price. So we're going to do something very similar today. And if this is your first video of mine that you've watched, don't forget to hit subscribe if you like this kind of stuff, because we learn a bunch of new different things. It doesn't have to be Python, it doesn't have to be C-sharp. Uh, it, it can be a plethora of different technologies that I just want to learn about, and then when I learn about it, I want to share it with you. So don't forget to hit subscribe if you haven't already. And let's check out what we're going to do today. Today we're going to do something very similar to my last video. If you haven't seen it, uh, it is a longer video. And I say that just because relative to my other videos. Eh, maybe not. It's, it's about the same. But we use an API to get the price of Bitcoin. And we use authentication. So what happens is we created an account and we get this key. So whenever we call the API, we use that key to say, oh, I am who I say I am, so give me the price of Bitcoin. Well, this time we're going to use an API, but there's no authentication. Merely we just call this API and it gives us back the price. We don't have to validate we are who we say we are, and it's a little bit simpler. So I thought maybe, maybe this is a good start to APIs, especially if you're interested in cryptocurrency, I guess. Anyway, we're going to be using VS Code. Uh, I use this for all of my Python. Um, very good code editor. It's it's free, so just type Visual Studio Code and it'll take you there. Let's talk about real quick what an API is. Uh, I'm going to say it as simply as I can. An API is what stands for Application Programming Interface. And basically what it is, it's a gateway to allow one application to talk to another. And they have this nice little diagram, I guess, on Google Images when I searched. And here's this web app. Okay, so you can think of our app as being the Python script, but you can replace Python script with this. Here's the internet, so we're going to call this web server, and it's going to take our call, our request, it's going to look at it, it's going to see what we're wanting to do, and then it's going to probably, you know, ask the database, hey, give me the data, and we're going to send this back the other way. Um, so we get a requ we send a request through the API, so it's formatted in a special way that the web server will know what we're wanting. It'll probably talk to the database, get what it needs, and send it back as a response. That's as simple as it can get. All right, so I'm here in VS Code. I made this larger, so hopefully you can see it pretty well. And I made this new directory called Python Bitcoin API No Authentication. I'll try to remember. I'm bad at this, but I'll try to remember put everything I do here on GitHub. It's not very, it's not much code. It's probably like... 10 lines, maybe max. I don't know how many lines it'll take to, to do what we need, but it won't be much, so you should be able to easily follow along. But if I remember, I'll try to put it on GitHub. Anyway, let's make a new file, so I'm going to hit Control N and then Control S to save it. And I'm going to call this like get price.py to make a Python file. All right, and what we need to do is we need to import requests. And if you don't have requests, you want to do a pip install requests. Uh, in your command line and it'll it'll download that that module for you all right so i am going to make a variable i'm just going to call it like response maybe and that's going to be equal to request dot get and then that's going to take in uh, a value for what we're calling what's the url of the api and the api url we're going to use let me throw it in here i just copy and pasted it i'll put this in the description too so uh, hopefully this isn't changed by the time you watch this video because sometimes URLs change depending on the developer. Um, so this is saying get the response of this call. And now I just want to print just to show you what it looks like response dot JSON. So we want the JSON of the response. All right, now let's go ahead and run it. So I'm going to do Python, get price.py, and here we go. This is the whole JSON response. And the hard part is, this is really hard to read through like this. It's not formatted down here. It's just spat out in a string. So I'm going to create another file, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And I think somewhere in VS Code, you can download an extension. I've done this on my laptop, but I forget what it's called, but it shouldn't be hard to find. It's like JSON pretty. Let's just type that in. 
JSON pretty printer. That sounds fine. Or Prettify. I think this is the one I have on my laptop. Prettify ugly JSON inside VS Code. Let's try installing that. Um, it does have over 700,000 downloads. Okay, the extension is enabled globally. Cool. So now if I hit F1 and I type in pretty fi JSON, we'll type that. Is it going to do anything? No, it will not. Maybe we need to save this. I don't remember. So let's call it response.json. So now it knows it is a JSON. Now let's try it again. Dang. I wonder if something's missing in here, like a formatting problem. I did this in my last video. So instead of trying to figure out with an extension, let's go and let's just search for uh, JSON formatter. And I'm going to click this first one. We're just going to paste the response here. And you can change how you want it to look after it formats it. Replace the incorrect quotes. Maybe that's what's tripping up the extension. I'm not sure. But now we have it formatted in a way that's so much easier to read. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in place of all that crap. And this is really becoming cumbersome, so I'm going <laughs> to clear down here and, and make it smaller. All right, so let's look at this real quick. So this is the, the main JSON object, and then we have objects inside of it. Uh, we have a time, we have a disclaimer, blah, blah, blah. The one we want is this value right here. So I'm doing US dollars, and I guess you can change it if you use either of these two. I'm going to do USD. So we want BPI, USD, and then rate. That is the path that we want. All right. So in order to do that, we just put in these square brackets each each name, and then the, and then the next name, and then the next name. So BPI USD rate. I think I can remember that. So BPI, and then capital. It, it is case sensitive. USD, and then rate. I think that's how it was. Well, let's find out. Let's just try running that again. I saved. Boom. We got it. We got the price of Bitcoin. So if we wanted to, so let's do something a little bit extra. You know, this isn't this isn't too hard, right? Um, let's do a little something else. Let's import time. And what I want to do is I just want to make a continuous loop while true, if I can type. Um, I'm just going to make a continuous loop. So let's, uh, let's cut these guys. Let's put it in the loop. Ah, come on. There we go. And then I'm going to do time.sleep. And let's sleep. I don't know how often it refreshes the, the data when we call the API. Um, so let's sleep like five seconds. And that's what it takes in. It takes in seconds. So I'll save and let's run that. And it should just keep printing out down here every five seconds the price. And like I said, I don't know how often. We'll wait and see. It refreshes this. But sooner or later, we should get a different price. And you can see it is a bit different than the first time we ran. So sometime in between that, it updated. But it doesn't look like it's that often because it's already been, what, 20 seconds? Because it ran four times. There we go. So maybe it's every maybe it's every 30 seconds. Um, I'm not sure how often this particular one updates. And that might be the benefit of the coin market cap that we saw in the last video. It might, it might refresh more frequently. Uh, and that's, OK, I just did it again. So maybe it's every. 20 seconds, I don't know. But this is free, and you don't need to authenticate, which is cool. Very simple. All right, that's all I got. Maybe I think I want to make a part two to this, and I'm thinking maybe we can make a web page with, it says the price of Bitcoin, and then it updates the web page price value. Kind of like a, a board, a dashboard, I guess, where you can just watch the price fluctuate with Bitcoin's price. That'd be cool. Yeah, let's try doing that in the next video.
Um, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully you enjoyed this. And uh, try it on your own. Very simple. How many lines of code is it? This whole thing's only, what, six lines? If you count the import. <laughs> so try it out on your own. And hopefully you can get it to work. Anyway, guys, see you in the next video. Take care.